all the tracks and you saw them, or was there some, put your hands tied, but you couldn't recall them, the things you saw? Well, I couldn't really write the stories that I've written in this book. I mean, for example, in this book, I really point the finger at Jomo Kenyatta and the Kikuyu Mafia for the murder of uh, Theo Bellamy. I could never have written that story. Have, have you taken a risk now? Have you put that in that book? Um, I cannot qualify exactly how much of a risk it is because the questions have been raised in Nairobi. Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen is it becomes in Nairobi. So. Yeah, I know a lot of people that fled after certainly in Bordeaux, whatever. Yeah. Okay, you've answered that. But second question, um, Mao Mao, was that a struggle between one Kikuyu tribe and another sub Kikuyu tribe, or was it to get the British out of East Africa? It was not. The Mau Mau was actually a group of former um, African Kikuyu soldiers from the British Army in the Second World War. Right. And they had seen action in, in the Far East, they had seen action in some parts of Europe, they had seen the prisons, they had seen uh, what life was like. Mau -Mau. And this, the simple question they asked themselves was why isn't our life like this? Yes. And when they came back, they, they started they started a land army. There is no such word as Mau Mau in Kikuyu mm -hmm. in any language. Okay. The word Mau Mau, the word Mau Mau were, were invented by a, an unknown British writer. But their fight was for the return of to the liberate the themselves. Yeah. No, not to liberate themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no question of, 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 of uh, liberation of the British. All they wanted was the land back. Then later on, mm -hmm. as the fight developed, and Theogama Pinto begins to play a part, that's it. And I think Theogama certainly saw the opportunity to turn the bomb off into a nationalist movement. And as a result of that, they didn't keep mapping declared unitary, unitary declaration of independence, mm -hmm. set up his own parliament in the forest, and called himself uh, president. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it was as a result of Yogama yeah. Pinto, Dejan Kimati, that they finally became a nationalist movement for freedom, mm -hmm. which they lost. I mean, they were beaten hands down. But the torch, has been lit. <coughs> Jomo Kenyatta, until the day he died, mm -hmm. ate Okay, final question. Do you think that the Gom <coughs> would have been welcome in, in East Africa if he had to participate more fully in the African struggle towards independence? My, my, my experience basically. I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Yeah, I'm asking whether uh, if the Gones had contributed positively towards the African struggle towards liberation and independence, if it did help them, right, would we be more welcome in East Africa after African independence? The short answer is yes. I think so. But. but. There's a but. 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 It, it would, would, the Gones would have to reinvent themselves. Yes. Uh, for example, you know, the, the job in the civil service is no longer to do that. Um, some of the other jobs are no longer to do that. Um, there would be a place, and there has been a place for Gones who have uh, become Kenyan citizens and continue to live there, and they continue to die out there, and it's a small community, but it's still there. But, there would be a place for Gons, but it would be... At a cost. At a cost. Yeah. At a huge cost. These what if questions are very tough because uh, what if you know there are so many variables and uh, it presumes that it presumes that we are going some uh, that but we can rely on history to history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their main, I, I feel that the main uh, quest was to get back the highly white highlands, not only white the highlands particularly because they were given to all the of the Mama. You are talking of the Mama. No, the white highlands belong. The White Highlands belonged to the Kalenjin. What they wanted back was all of the Kikuyu land. Kikuyu. Um, but then, later on, 
brilliance of John Kenyatta through the good offices of Daniel Arap Moy, who was the head of the Cabinet Jin, allowed the Kikuyus to remain and take on the lands that were located by the British. And that is why, if you remember what it was five years ago, or six years ago, when the big uh, war started in the Rift Valley, yeah, between the Kikuyu and the Cabinet Jin and the Mandis. And so, I think it was 1980. No. Around that period, there was a huge war before an election for which Uhuru Kenyatta and a guy called Ruto were being charged <coughs> in the International Criminal Court. But then there were subsequently, you know, there was no witnesses coming forward. There were no witnesses coming forward, so they just they wiped them. Went to they they just no wiped watches. But yeah. that was a war between the Kikuyu and the Israeli tribes. So there is no love lost on but your point is that what starts off as one thing ends up as something else. Yes. Just like how in Goa, the 1946 movement was a movement for civil liberties and then it became a part for independence. Exactly. Or say the 1979 movement was a student struggle for bus fare concessions. Yes. And then it becomes anti-Shashikala kind of, you know, yeah. movement. So, so movements do more, do, do, do like more, do more. Usually it starts with a uh, core yeah. concept, but then with politics, things took a twist. It changes, yeah. I mean, South Africa, for example, you know, Soweto and, and the student uprising came yeah. and they gave birth to the food. I mean, they always had a, a freedom movement, but it was dominant for quite some time when Soweto was in prison. Soweto was one of the main factors. Yes. Similarly, as he was talking about Gons participating, yes. I don't think uh, the majority of the Gons would have participated because they were essentially a peaceful community. The majority of them were working in the civil service, like my father and all worked yeah. in the DC's office, district commissioner's office. Everybody. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to get into uh, exactly. I would like to echo what you're saying, <laughs> very truly, in yes, line with what you asked about. Um, I think uh, I had three generations of my family there. Pio Gama Pinjo was my first cousin, really? and uh, my father's sister's son, okay. and uh, as said in the family and amongst the Goans whom I've interacted over the years is we Goans were more worried to keep our jobs okay. secure, not burn our fingers. Yes, 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 yes. You know, yes. Pure yes. put his life on the line. Exactly. He he listened to no one, including Emma. We only wanted the money. You know? <laughs> so I don't think Goans would ever have taken that step. Yep. You know? And for the for their own good reasons. We were, we still considered ourselves as Goans, not Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Pure yeah. was Kenyan first. Okay. I know, I so know. My, answering your uh, question. My elder brother passed away from now the gospel. I don't know about that. He did lots of papers on Gama Pinto. But do you know the facts of what happened to Gama Pinto? Have the facts come across? Well, the only facts that have come across are formations that are contained in this. Okay. From my perspective, your Gama Pinto had to die. And there was no two ways about it. I'll explain. For a long time, Pio did a hell of a lot for Jomo Kinyad. When Jomo Kinyad was in prison, he looked after his house and paid for the you know, house and all the kind of stuff. He looked after him, you know, all the kind of stuff. And then, when he was in uh, detention himself, uh, they used to send him 20 shillings, 15 shillings, whatever money to get. And he'd give it to the other guys to oh, yeah, buy work for their own. Why would he put in detention? Why was he put in detention? Yeah. What would come up with because the British, because the British recognized that he was actually raising the voice. Troublemaker. Not troublemaker. I mean, from that point, he was troublemaker. Yeah. <laughs> but from our, from our, from from the political yeah. uh, analytical, analytical point of view, because yeah. he was basically jury carrying on the carrying on on, on the war of independence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was doing things like this. He he suddenly realized that. Um, the whole leadership of the Kenya African Union, which was the precursor of Kenya African National Union, mm -hmm. was in jail. Uh, so that Kakia, all of these guys, mm -hmm. and Joe Mukinella and all. And then he suddenly saw um, um, Joe, Joe Murumbi took on the temporary general secretaryship or the chairmanship of Kenya African Union. And he, he said, they're going to take him as well. Uh, 
So he smuggled him out to India, and from India he went to the UK, and from UK he started uh, demonstrating in the House of Commons. So what Pio was doing basically was he was actually working with the Mama. He was arming the Mama. He was arming the Mama, and most importantly, he was providing them with strategy. And the British just couldn't handle that. These are documented facts. No? Yeah, these are documented facts. Does anyone know where Joseph Murumbi's family is? The Goan part of his family? Uh, Giri, Giri. Yeah, but where? After three years. Yeah. As Lewis says, he also looked after the families of the Mao who were killed. Uh -huh. and, and he involved Dr. Yusuf to care for them and he actually paid for them. But even more than that, Pio Gama paid for... Pio paid for looking after Murumbi's first wife, who was a Somali girl, and they had a son by, by them. Later on, when he married a <coughs> white woman, she came and saw him. She actually, Joe brought them to me, yeah. Pio and Emma, and Fitz, because they were renting rooms from Fitz, right? Yeah. And uh, when the woman took one look at Somali girl, she was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she said to him, send her back. And Pio paid for the small girl to return home with the son. And nothing more was heard of that. So, to answer your question, let me just go back to the Gond question. Gond were not a political. No, Mr. Fernandez, you started by saying that you had to die. I, yes. I, I think he just he <laughs> uh, stopped you half, half a half could you, Could you just uh, answer that? Yeah, <laughs> just hang on a minute, come back to Um, Pio had to die for one reason and one reason only. Jomo Kenyatta, an absolutely brilliant man, very clever politician, had usurped all the land, both the White Islands and the Kikuyu lands, back into Kikuyu hands. And he did it in a very brilliant way. What he did was he arranged a bank loan from the World Bank and a loan from the British government called the Land Transfer Fund. And he virtually gave away land that they bought during by when they set up from the white guys to various Kabutsa groups. He even gave away 100 acre plots with a house on it, and that was called the Z plot in the And uh, in the end, what happened basically is they were being free of charge. So the, Kenyan, the, the people of Kenya ended paying up for that. Now, while this was happening, Pio Gama Pinto, Ogino Odinga, Joe Murumbi, Joseph uh, Kadir, Achei uh, Maneko, all of these guys on the, on the left of the government were beginning to make, make noises that uh, this, is not the, this is not the independence that we fought for. And then came the big blow the help of an American provided by the U.S. government in Washington by Tom Boyer, they introduced Sessional Paper Number 10, which, which basically legitimized Kenya as a capitalist society. That day when that bill was to be presented, Ogingo Dinga and Pio and a couple of other guys, that Kenyatta in the corridor said to them that they were going to move, and Pio said, Pio said, we're going to move a motion of no confidence in you. And there was a bit of a couple when they, they went away. Somehow or the other, it happened that Pio was on his own the next time he saw Kenyatta in the, in the corridors, uh, discussing the whole issue about uh, allowing as many Kenyans to enjoy the fruits of rather than a, few, a new African elite, a black elite, a Kikuyu elite, which is, which is replacing the white man. Uh, in that conversation, uh, Kenyatta called Pio a bastard. And Pio turned around and said, you're the bigger bastard. <laughs> that was an absolute <laughs> rip roll going on. Fitz de Souza was standing about 25, 30 yards, 30 yards away. And he was just listening. He didn't involve him. 
And uh, so the thing basically was, Pio was Ohinga, oh, Ohinga was Dinga's principal strategist, advisor, and the brains behind the left, the socialist. If you got rid of the brains, you got rid of the socialist left. And if you look at history, you will find that as soon as Pio was killed, the socialist left 